Ever since the ice disappeared from northern Europe about 10,000 years ago, an amazing performance has been carried out by the most impressive game species of Europe, the majestic red deer. Beginning by mid-September and lasting for about a month, the forest echoes with the big lion-like roars of the big stags and the sound of antlers crashing against each other. The purpose of this is twofold, to keep rivals at a distance and at the same time attract interested females. This performance is repeated all over the world, where there are red deer populations, but only few places where the stags fight over the hinds are they as impressive as the estate of Berleburg, situated in the German lander of Nordrhein-Westfalia. Berleburg Castle was made the seat of the Principality of Sein Wittgenstein in 1258. The present head of the family, Prince Richard, and his son, Prince Gustav, are, just like their predecessors, dedicated hunters, but based upon a deep passion for the estate's game and its proper management. In spite of the originally very harsh conditions, the prince and his son have been able to establish probably the strongest and best managed red deer populations in the world. The fighting is very hard and exhausting for the animals. During the three to four weeks that the ruts lasts, the stags are so focused on mating and keeping their rivals at a distance that the mature stags rarely find time to eat. Physical activity around the clock, combined with a minimum of food intake, naturally has consequences. During the rut, dominant stags usually lose up to 25% of their body weight. The violent fights naturally also lead to physical damage on some stags, and some of the injuries are of such a grave nature that the stags die from them later. Today, the estate of Berleborg covers around 13,000 hectares of land, and most of it is forested with a combination of hard and soft wood. When you see the terrain from above, it's evident how Berleborg has been created as a pattern of different forest parts consisting of a variety of trees. In the forests, there are numerous meadows with green grass, which is an important food source for the red deer. But it's only the forest's layout, which is designed for the purpose of game management and a proper culling of the animals. The center of the game management at Berleborg is this beautiful building by the name of Homerichshausen, which is placed in the middle of the red deer's core habitats. Although four game managers are employed to manage game population under the management of Patrick Rath, who himself was educated at this estate. Berleborg is not only the home of one of Europe's strongest populations of red deer, but also has impressive populations of wild boar and mouflon sheep, along with a line of other and lesser game species. A precondition for good game management is an intimate knowledge of the population, which necessitates observations in the terrain on a daily basis all year round. Even though the landscape in wintertime appears idyllic, this is a trying time for the game. And for this reason, the hunting pressure is kept at a minimum in periods with snow. The main principle behind gamekeeping of stags at Berleborg is that the breeding stags are never shot before they have reached at least 12 years of age. The reason for this is that natural selection are influenced by such an extensive number of factors that not even the most apt game manager will be able to take all of them into account. If stags are selected only based upon the development of their trophy, the risk is that the wrong animals are left to influence the breeding and hereby in the long run weakening the population from a strictly biological perspective. During March, the stags will shed their antlers and immediately new ones begin to develop. In the springtime, the red deer divide according to gender and the mature stags gather in so-called bachelor groups while living apart from the hinds, calves and young animals. At this time of year, the animals are busy eating in order to increase their body weight as their fat storages have been spent during the winter period. In an amazingly short time, the new set of antlers grows with the beams of full thickness. The calcification of the antlers is ongoing and only the outermost seven centimeters or three inches of the points are soft underneath the velvet. Altogether, it takes four months for the biggest stags to fully develop their antlers. It takes almost as much nutrition for a large stag to develop its antlers as it does for a hind to create a calf. The velvet is removed during only a few hours, and normally the stags eat the velvet, which is rich in important nutrients and minerals. The fact that stags in the summer period usually stay together makes it easier to compare their heads and the animal's development in general. 
At Brailleborg, there are a small number of white stags, of which a few have entered the elite which breeding stags constitutes. The calves are usually born by the middle of May, and the size and the state of health of all the calves present valuable information to the experienced game manager concerning the potential of each individual and the health being of the entire population in general. Naturally, not only the red deer population is managed at Berleburg, the same goes for the population of other large species, in particular wild boar, mufflon sheep, and roe deer. The wild boar is a less complicated species to manage compared to red deer due to their much larger breeding capability and considerably shorter lifespan. That leaves a large margin for mistakes, which is a good thing. A selective shooting of wild boar can be rather difficult to do on a systematic basis due to the species' way of living. Berleburg is also home of Europe's most northern populations of black storks. By late summer, the red deer are still divided according to gender, while the mufflon live in mixed herds until the rutting season. Already at high summer does the stag's testosterone level begin to increase, and this is why they gradually start to demonstrate aggression towards each other. The bachelor groups gradually begin to disperse during the weeks leading up to the establishment of territories, and the deer will mingle more and more with other species which live close to the wet areas where the wallows soon will attract many red deer. Not only stags use the wallows, the hinds too lie down into the wallow prepared already by the stag and marked with his scent. The reason for this is not fully understood, but possibly it's because the females in this way, by their scent, now make a strong signal to rivals that they already belong to another stag. The territorial stags dig their wallows in wet depressions. By urinating and ejaculating in the mud and then rolling around in it, the stag is able to strongly enhance his scent markings of the surrounding area. This stag perfume both attracts the hinds and deters potential rivals who may be in doubt whether they dare to challenge the stag in order to conquer his hinds. By turning his upper lip inside out, the stag enhances his ability to catch the scent of females in heat nearby. This phenomenon is called fleeman. Disinterested, the hind keeps feeding while the stag waits for them to get into heat. Even though the hinds emit heat scents for a couple of weeks, they're only willing to mate for one or two days. Mating lasts only a short time, but is repeated numerous times with each hind. The stag's roaring serves two purposes. One is to warn rivals that his territory has been taken. The other to attract hinds in heat. During the mating season, the forest echoes with the sound of the many stags' rolling roars. Very experienced game managers such as Patrick Rath are actually able to recognize some stags by their roaring. In order to locate stags or simply lure them out into the open, Patrick imitates their roars by using a special stag call when hunting in the rutting season. The head of Berleburg's game management, Patrick Rath, and Cern Nielsen is hunting a class one stag. This implies that the age of the stag must be a minimum of 12 years. After having located a stag, the two hunters have stalked up to a forest glade. Cern spots a movement and warns Patrick. A young stag appears and leaps into the forest glade. This will most likely provoke the territorial stag, and the two hunters hope that he may be a class one stag. Where is it? Soon, a mature stag appears. However, he is not a class one stag, which the hunters are looking for. But they keep their position and watch him while waiting further action. This stag may not appear impressive at first, but the head actually measures about 210 CIC points. However, it still has one or two more years to go before it becomes a class one stag and can be harvested. Most other places in the world, a stag like this would be shot. And although Cern and Patrick are in an awkward position between the trees, they stay put and enjoy the sight of the majestic animal. During the weeks of the rut, it is very important to have an intimate knowledge of where the wallows are placed and which stags that will visit them. The number of stags attending a wallow can vary from a single animal and up to somewhere between four and ten stags. There is no rule of thumb as to the number of visits, and a stag can easily be found to visit a wallow very infrequently. 
Accordingly, the probability of finding a stag of the right age is very much depending on the game manager's knowledge of the habits of the individual stags. Suddenly, the territorial stag appears, and it seems like an important appointment somewhere else in the forest suddenly came to mind of our formerly very bold friend here. This stag has a considerably better head than our friend from before, but he is not older, and accordingly it will be another year before he reaches class one and can be taken. It is characteristic for the German approach to game management that it is not the individual proprietor alone who determines the culling policy for his area. Instead, the hunting lords of Nordrhein-Westphalia has all the hooved game species divided into different and very detailed classes with specific rules for when and under which circumstances they can be harvested. German hunting laws are generally based upon a long-term harvesting philosophy where you only harvest the surplus of a given area's carrying capacity of species and types of animals. In order to ensure a reasonable allocation and a chance for every hunter to take a given type of game, there are minimum requirements to the size of the area needed to harvest an animal of a given species and class. If you do not have the right to hunt on an area of the size needed, you must make an association with your neighbors in order to fulfill the requirements of the law regarding area size and management, including paying for any damage to the crops made by the game. A class one stag, old stags must be at least 12 years old. In order to harvest one animal in this class every year, you must have 2,000 hectares of red deer habitat at your disposal. A middle-aged stag is from 4 to 11 years and called a class 2 stag, while young stags in class 3 are from 1 to 3 years. For each class of stags, there is a demand of access to a certain size of hunting area. If the hunting association has less than 2,000 hectares needed, it can qualify for a class 1 stag by saving. If the association, for instance, has 1,000 hectares, it can apply for a class 1 stag every second year. If they do not succeed in harvesting the stag, they have saved the right to take it in one of the following years. In the same manner, you can extend the quota for a given size of area by contributing to the proper game management according to the intention of the law, for instance, by killing the proper amount of hinds and calves. As Patrick and Cern did not succeed in finding a stag yesterday, they're back in the terrain here at dawn. As they are close to the stag's territory, the two hunters are stalking very carefully. At suitable intervals, Patrick tries to locate the stag by its roaring. Although they should succeed in finding the precise spot where the stag is, it will still be difficult to get sufficiently close to get a clean shot due to the vegetation. In a situation like this, it is mandatory to be very careful and move slowly onwards while constantly scanning the area with your binoculars. Patrick has spotted the stag, which is a good 13-year-old animal with a fine head. It is not possible for Cern to shoot from here. The two hunters must run the risk and stalk in closer for a better position. The animal is lying down at a spot where it is covered by both the trunk of a beech tree and a windfall. And on top, it is below the curvature of the hill all of which makes an approach within range very difficult. In addition, the hunters also have to avoid being seen in the open, and the dead leaves will inevitably make noise when you move over them. concern begin their stalk on all fours. The distance to the stag is not far, but the two hunters must get closer in order to get a free line of fire. The stag is still there, but doesn't roar anymore as he noticed something. 
Patrick has no other choice than to continue ever so carefully. But it's a difficult task. Patrick was hoping that the two hunters would be able to stalk up to the large beech tree in front of them, but the stag is too alerted. Accordingly, Patrick signals to Cern to rest the rifle on his shoulder. It is probably a matter of seconds before this window of opportunity is closed. While Cern gets ready to shoot, the stag ran off unnoticed by the two hunters. Seconds later, Patrick realizes this to his very understandable chagrin. All experienced hunters know the disappointment from being very close but not getting a shot. But paradoxically, this is an important part of the charms of hunting. If the outcome was given in advance, there was no point in hunting. Patrick knows this stag well and has been monitoring it for several years, so he's not worried. Berleberg has a careful policy of culling stags, regardless whether they're of class one, two, or three. The estate has far more focus on managing the population than on the trophies, which are only considered a bonus. As there is still plenty of time before sunset, Patrick and Cern decide to wait for a while and see if the hinds, and thereby the stag, will move on, and if so, in which direction. Meanwhile, the hunters can enjoy the sight of the magnificent animals. Unfortunately for the two hunters, it is impossible to approach the stag from this side of the valley, due to both the direction of the wind and the many hinds which surround the other stag. It is 10 years old and accordingly not ready for harvesting, although it is a beautiful stag. Although it is tantalizing for Cern to be both so close and so far away from being able to shoot the stag of his life, it's an excellent occasion to get a grip of the stag fever. And suddenly something happens. A rival challenges Cern Stag in a classical manner and enables us to watch the entire show with threatening posture, marked charges, and actual fighting. When the rival arrived, Patrick instantly realized that Cernstag would now probably be occupied for a sufficiently long time to enable the two hunters to walk around the valley and approach the stag from the crest on the other side. But first, they must back and circumnavigate the stag without startling a hind or another stag, and hereby chase Cernstag off. <laughs> Patrick can hear the roars from below, and therefore he knows that the stag is still with the hinds again. But as long as he can hear the roars, he knows that there is a good chance of getting in position for a shot. After having chambered around in his rifle and adjusting the magnification of his scope, Cern carefully accompanies Patrick down towards the stag in the valley below. Although there is still quite a distance down to the stag, the hunters must move slowly and make sure not to be detected by other animals in the area. Patrick is happy now as he knows that the stag is nearby and that it's moving towards the hinds by the wallow and accordingly the hunters can continue their stalk. When they reach the tall trees, Patrick is excited to see if the stag is still down between the trees. The stag is there, but somewhat nervous. It's not the stag the hunters are looking for, but although it cannot have gotten their scent, it is apparently sensed that there is something fishy going on. 
Patrick decides to give the stag a little time to settle down. Repeated roaring makes their hair stand on end from excitement, but at the same time they are reassuring as the hunters know it is still close by, although they cannot see it yet. Due to the steep hill, the hunters have to lie in a somewhat awkward position in order to try and see if the stag is the one they're looking for. Cern gets ready to shoot if the stag should suddenly move free of the branches. The seconds feel like minutes, and the minutes like hours. Soon, it is the moment of truth. Is this the stag which Patrick thinks it is? If so, it's up to Cern to finish the hunt with a good shot. But due to Cern's awkward position, there is a limit of how long he can keep his head and shoulders up, and hereby maintain a firm rest for his rifle. But the seconds are dragging along, while the stag definitely has no hurry moving, and soon Cern's rifle barrel begins to dance a little due to his efforts. Don't shoot into the group. Finally, the stag appears from behind the leaves. The question now is whether he will offer a chance for a decent shot. The stag must stand broadside, and the line of fire must be free both in front of and behind the stag. In spite of his stag fever and his soaring neck muscles, Cern manages to keep calm. Okay.
This is quite a challenge, but an experience of a special character, CERN. Let us see it filmed from both sides of the valley. CERN is using RWS ammunition in caliber 300 Winchester Magnum. The bullet is well placed, and it's evident how it penetrates the body entirely after having expanded and torn the heart-lung region apart. Accordingly, the stag drops dead after a short sprint as oxygen is no longer transported to its brain. It's lame. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Well done. It was a stop. Yeah. The relief is great when the hunters a few minutes later can get a 100% confirmation that the stag is dead. Patrick breaks off a twig, which he will dip in the dead stag's blood as a symbol of the animal's last meal. The hunt at Bailaburg and the hours with Patrick Rath will be kept in CERN's memory forever as the finest hunt he ever experienced. The sight of the stag's antlers on CERN's trophy wall will be a lasting memory of a truly special hunt. The tradition is that Prince Richard is instantly informed when a stag has been taken, and shortly after, he arrives in order to congratulate CERN with his magnificent stag. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Really, really big stack. Old stack. Thank you for super stock. I think we have jagged him intense these last few days. I've been set for many times. But at least he has him. But snu. Og ligesom. Så, og den her gang, der, jamen, jeg troede ikke på det, vi var så tæt på. Og vi lagde ind for, jamen vi kommer ind på 50 meter. Hvor vi kom ned, så begynder de at gå ned imod os. Hænderen der, og han er inde i, inde i flokken, hvor han jager rundt med den. Og vi kommer op og ligger helt op mod et træ. Og jeg får sådan rimelig hold på mig selv, synes jeg. Og øh, men så forsvinder han bag ved en busk, og der er han inde i væk nogle minutter og føler, og så kommer han frem og vender rundt. Og, og så lige pludselig giver han mig en lille åbning inde i, og der får, jeg føler, at jeg får et rigtig godt skud på, og han tager en rigtig flot. Men så render han, og det kan jeg, ikke, jeg kan ikke følge ham. Men han har vel gået 20-30 meter. Men med en god kugle. Han er ikke helt, jeg er ikke helt forstået det nu, at skudsvåren gjort. Det skal lige... Ja, det er svært at finde ord for noget her. Det er fantastisk. 22 ender. In order to honor and remember the fallen giant, traditional horn signals are blown over the stag, which is put on parade in front of the castle and flanked by his former sets of antlers found by the game managers during the years. To take one of the many majestic stags here at Bellaborg is hereby turned into an all-encompassing experience where you both visually and audibly demonstrate that respect of the game is an important part of being a hunter. One thing is certain, 
Cern will never forget the sight of the two fighting stags, of which the largest became his after so many efforts. Finally, Cern must have some snapshots of Prince Richard and Prince Gustav, the game managers, and himself. A local kindergarten passes by, and all the kids are invited to see the stag and its antlers as part of giving the non-hunting community an understanding of the fact that hunting is much more than just killing an animal. For these children, it's a natural thing that we harvest the surplus of nature, as they, opposed to most children today, are raised in an environment where agriculture, forestry, and hunting are a part of everyday life. With the old giant fell, many successes have grown up, and the forest still reverberates from their roars, a very evident proof of the clever and far-sighted game management which has made Berleborg so famous. Naturally, the rut of the red deer is the most spectacular wildlife experience at Berleborg, but there is so much more. Yannick Lang is an apprentice at Berleborg, but will soon be a fully trained game manager. Today, he is guiding Danish hunter Kenneth Schott. During their stalk, the two hunters meet a small herd of wild boars in one of the many forest glades, made to prevent the game from damaging the trees. Yannick has been given the task of finding a very old stag, which should have been harvested several years ago, but has managed to lure several hunters through the years. Okay. As ever, during a quiet stalk, there are plenty of opportunities to watch other species of wildlife at the terrain. Here it's a great spotted woodpecker, which is in charge of the entertainment. While the hunters carefully scan a glade with their binoculars, they spot another of Bellaborg's attractions, a herd of mouflon sheep with a good ram amongst them. Apart from the opportunity to watch the beautiful animals, the hunters have to wait for the herd to pass them. If the old stag is in the clearing behind the sheep, the last thing which the hunters need is a herd of fleeing sheep, which inevitably will take the shy stag along with them. Unfortunately, Yannick didn't succeed in finding the shy old stag, neither this evening nor the next morning. But naturally, this is far from enough to make neither the game managers nor Kenneth give up. Patrick has taken Kenneth to another area, and they've almost stalked their way to the high tower from which Patrick last saw the old stag. Just to make sure, they scan the clearing behind the trees an extra time before they walk over to the ladder and climb up into the tower. They haven't waited long before a single animal appears in the clearing. It's obviously a stag, but is it the right one? The entire appearance of the animal tells us that it is an old animal. Notice the massive body and the declining tines, especially on the top of the antlers. Kenneth gets ready, slowly and meticulously, in order not to make noise and scare the stag off.
I think it was a good shot. Yeah. I also think it was a good shot. You hit him really. Yeah, but I couldn't see him go down. In slow motion, it's evident that the stag got a good hit. No doubt it is dropped behind the trees. stag is a difficult trophy to get and one which many even seasoned hunters can only dream of obtaining there are no areas in the world where you can expect to kill a 17 year old stag from a managerial point of view the stag was the right animal to cull apart from the risk that it would have succumbed if the next winter was a hard one in all it doesn't get much better for a true hunter Well done. You can make it safe. Accordingly, it is a great moment for Kenneth when he reaches his stag. Kenneth has had a very special hunting experience. It was a perfect morning here at Bellabourg, where the guest and Patrick both are happy that the old stag got a worthy ending and didn't become a victim of King Frost before being eaten by the ravens. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Look at this big old gray head. He's gray and he looks like an old bull with the eyes. That you've seen it if you walked uh, past, uh, past the little field. So beautiful big old stag. This is a... Very old. Look at the teeth. Yeah. <sighs> so he didn't run very far. Didn't run no, very no. far. No. Twenty-five meters. So it works. Uh, Thirty or six. Yeah. Super. It, what kind of bullet uh, did you use? It's ABS. Okay. And what kind, what type of bullet? It's Kyle Spitz. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's a, it's a 9.7. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit lighter, yeah. but, but it's okay. It yeah. works well? Yeah, it works very well. <laughs> But you hit him really hard, so. And he was very stiff in his. The whole behavior was very like yeah. an old man, so. And um, you can see this at his back, he's hanging at, at, the, at the back. It was. Yeah. He cannot move so fast. And it's okay? It's very okay. It's very good. <laughs> The traditions are not forgotten, although this is a stag which almost takes the breath away from Patrick, and it does completely for Kenneth. This is a hunt which Kenneth will never forget, and which he is not likely to be surpassed by any other 
as a stag of this age and quality is extremely hard to find. Weidmannstein. Weidmannstein. Your first Bellebrook stag. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. Nice stock. Big old stag. Look at this old face. It's a broad face. Yeah. Face and long and grey, grey eyes and. It's looking a bit tired. And it's absolute on the bottom of the head. So. Yeah, they look tired. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole body, if they, if they stalk, they are. Yeah, and when he was standing up the first time, he looked, oh, he was all stiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. And the weather today. This morning was was good for us with a little bit of rain and so Some the stalking is not so loud and I think it was the right decision to go up here this morning. Well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a camera? Yeah. Of course, Kenneth wants some pictures for his hunting journal, and the same goes for Patrick. This has been a hunt where sound game management was combined with a great hunting experience. Patrick wanted this stag culled, and it was celebrated with a beer, a parade, and a ceremony, according to tradition here at Bellabor. But we must not forget that hunting at Valeborg is far from over. We shall continue our search for the class one stags in the rut and are now going to witness a nerve wracking hunt with another guest who has visited Valeborg several times in order to hunt stags. Anyone who has hunted here knows that it is something special and that the stags can be hunted in many ways here. We are now going to accompany the German hunter Christian Wilhelm who is among the privileged few who are offered the unique experience it is to see and hunt at Bailaborg's fantastic terrains. Let us hear what he has to say. My name is Christian Willem and I came for 15 years here to Bailaborg and that is actually now so in the last year my yachtliche Heimat geworden. And the fascinating ist einfach die Hirschjacht. Es dreht sich hier alles um die Hirschjacht und das macht den ganzen Reiz hier auch aus. Und ich habe vor ja, ungefähr oder genau vor acht Jahren hier meinen ersten Hirsch geschossen. Und das war so ein Erlebnis, das, das schließt einen dann in so einen Bann ein. Ja? Und das Größte ist halt auch für einen Hirschjäger, der halt so das Hirschfieber so richtig gepackt hat, ist die Brumpft. Ja? Und dieses Jahr wollen wir halt nochmal versuchen, zur Brumpft einen reifen Hirsch zu erlegen. Und unser Ziel ist halt, oder meine Vorstellung ist halt, dass wir auch einen richtig alten Hirsch bekommen. Ja? Und äh, der Patrick Rath, der zuständige Berufsjäger hier, hat äh, auch tagelang oder wochenlang nach einem geschaut. Und die nächsten Tage werden wir halt versuchen, auf der Pirsch, weil das ist das, was ich gerne möchte. Ich möchte also nicht an den Hirsch vom Hochsitz schießen, einen Hirsch zu erlegen. Und für diese Jagd habe ich hier eine spezielle Waffe mitgebracht. Das ist eine Sauer 202 mit einem ja, etwas leichteren Lauf, den den Vorteil hat, dass er beim Pirschen und beim Laufen halt nicht so schwer ist. Ja. Und da ist ein Glas drauf von Swarovski. Das ist 1,7 bis 10 mal 42, ein Z6i und das hat den Vorteil, dass man halt auch bei der Pirsch in einem ganz Kurzbereich schießen kann oder auch gegebenenfalls, wenn der Hirsch halt weiter weg steht, mal schnell hochdrehen kann und auch auf weite Entfernung jagen kann. Und es hat nur ein 42er Durchmesser, das ist hier für die Yacht in Berleburg vollkommen ausreichend, weil wir haben hier eine Tagjacht ja, und hier wird nachts nicht gejagt und insofern ist das Gewehr eigentlich dann hier die optimale Geschichte, um hier einen Hirsch zu schießen. Auch was auch ganz interessant ist, ich, dieses Gewehr führe ich auch auf Bewegungsjachten. Das ist halt eine universelle Geschichte. Viele bevorzugen ein Aimpoint oder halt auch ein, ein reines Drückjagdglas. Das ist sicherlich auch alles gut. Ich mag es halt, wenn ich die Möglichkeit habe, auch mal ein Stück Wild, wenn es halt an einem vorbeikommt und dann auf 50, 60 Meter, äh, sage ich jetzt mal, verhofft, dass man es auch noch sicher schießen kann. Oder gegebenenfalls auch, wir haben auch bei den Yachten hier Hirsche frei, geringere Hirsche, schwächere Hirsche. Und ich ich habe die Möglichkeit auch mit diesem 
Glas halt auch noch ein Hirsch im Zielen anzusprechen. Das soll ganz interessant ist, weil man einfach die Vergrößerung nach oben drehen kann. Now let's follow Christian and Patrick on their hunt. They quickly find an impressive stack. To many hunters, this would be a dream trophy, but at Bellaborg, it's merely a good stack. The two hunters can't help enjoying the sight of the impressive stack. But it is not what Christian has come for. In spite of its good head, the stag is not old enough to qualify as the Class 1 stag, but is still two or even three years short of being ready for harvest. But this is exactly what makes hunting at Bailaborg such a great experience. The two hunters continue their stalk. They're now quite close to a wallow, and both hunters meticulously scan the terrain, hoping to spot an antler or something red between the trees. But the vegetation here is so dense that there is an overwhelming risk of getting detected by the stag if they continue. After the stag has roared, Patrick decides to try to call it in. Christian keeps scanning the terrain in the direction of the roars. It takes a good amount of patience and many roars to call a rutting stag in, but it can be a very efficient but quite nerve-wracking method, which surely raises the stag fever. But suddenly, something is moving between the trees. It is the stag, and it's now very close. The hunters have plenty of time to evaluate the stag. However, Patrick quickly establishes that it is not in class one. Patrick is very interested to see how close he can make the stag come. But in the end, it was just too much for the animal when it realized who the rivals were. Ich 
And now for something completely different. Let us see how to determine the age of a stag as precisely as possible. No one is ever fully educated in the noble art of hunting. You can always learn something new or more. Also Christian, ich habe uns hier eine Abwurfreihe von einem Hirsch aufgebaut, vom sechsten Kopf an aufwärts. Ähm, da wissen wir es ganz genau, das ist, den wirst du kennen, aus Berleburg 1, Babyface, ein weißer Hirsch, vom sechsten Kopf an. Und ähm, du weißt, wir wollen auch unsere Hirsche zwölf Jahre alt werden lassen, hier ganz eindrucksvoll dargestellt. Und ich will dir eigentlich zeigen, wo dran man im Geweih erkennen kann, dass es immer wieder der gleiche Hirsch ist. Wir versuchen so viele Abwurfstangen wie möglich jedes Jahr an der Fütterung äh, aufzusammeln und dann den Hirschen entsprechend wieder zuzuordnen. Ähm, sonst ist es doch mitunter dann auch sehr schwierig, dann die Hirsche wieder zu erkennen. Wenn du dir die Stange anguckst, im Grunde genommen den Stangenaufbau, die Hauptstange mit Aug, Eis und Mittelsprosse und Krone, was dem Hirsch im Grunde genommen immer erhalten bleibt, ist der Schwung der Hauptstange, Schwung der Augsprosse weitestgehend mit dem, mit dem Winkel zur, zur Hauptstange, der Abgang und genauso bei der Mittelsprosse. Die, ja? Okay, das heißt also, das heißt also, das ist immer der Fingerabdruck, ja? Und Aha. oben die Krone ändert sich? Nein. Fingerabdruck zum Fingerabdruck komme ich gleich noch. Das sind die wesentlichen Züge, die eigentlich immer an der Stange gleich bleiben. Okay. So, die Eisprosse kann noch mal variieren. Krone im Grunde genommen auch. Da kommen noch ein paar, ähm, ein paar Enden mal dazu. Der Hauptschwung der Krone bleibt auch gleich in etwa. Aber der eigentliche Fingerabdruck ist unten die Petschaft. Aha. Die ist, wenn du dir das im, im Laufe der des nächsten Jahres dann anguckst. Das ist im Grunde genommen genau das gleiche, ja. nur etwas größer. Mhm. Der Rosenrand vielleicht mal etwas anders, aber wenn du die Stangen jetzt schon so nebeneinander siehst oder so nebeneinander hältst, dann kannst du schon sehen, da ist der gleiche Schwung drin. Und jetzt hier in diesem Fall kannst du dann sehen, die Stange hat natürlich auch deutlich an Masse schon zugenommen. Ja, ja. das ist ja beeindruckend, ja, wie was in einem Jahr dann passieren kann. Ne? Ja. Der ist jetzt vom 13. Kopf in diesem Jahr. Das heißt also, von Zurücksetzen ist keine Rede. Also hat er jedes Jahr noch Von Zurücksetzen ist hier noch nicht die Rede. Ja, der hat ähm, also bis zum 12. ganz sicher zugenommen. In diesem Jahr habe ich mir schon mal gesehen, habe ich auch das Gefühl, dass er mit dem 13. Kopf noch nicht wirklich zurückgesetzt hat oder anfängt zurückzusetzen. Der hat meines Erachtens sogar noch mal eine Schippe draufgepackt. Das wird ein Hirsch sein, um... 220 Punkte. Aber das ist natürlich schon ja. Goldmedaille, denke ich, ne? Absolut. Ab 210 Punkte ist Goldmedaille. Ja, Wahnsinn. Das zeigt uns auch, dass ein Hirsch mit, mit zehn Jahren im Grunde genommen noch nicht unbedingt seinen Höhepunkt erreicht haben muss. Ja, ja. Das macht so den Eindruck, als ob, wenn sie älter werden, umso interessanter werden sie, ne? Je älter, umso interessanter. Irgendwann fangen die an, Merkmale zu bilden, ähm, die sie dann wirklich richtig interessant machen. Ja, toll. Although this was the short version, it is very impressive what Patrick can teach even an experienced stag hunter. In the bonus material for this film, there is an even more informative edition of what Patrick just told. This is highly recommended if you are contemplating to hunt a trophy red stag. A new day breaks. It is early morning and it is September the 24th. The forest is echoing with stags roaring like never before. The rut is at its peak. Due to the amount of activity in the forest, Patrick and Christian have decided to continue the hunt by trying to call in the stags. This is an extraordinary hunt, for the rut and the stag fever is rampant. Frequently, the small hair on your arms will stand on end, and you'll feel like a hedgehog. The air is thick with excitement. Let us enjoy Christian and Patrick's morning at Langegrund, where they are hunting a 13-year-old stag from Patrick's list of animals picked out for culling this year.
This really is a hunt where the hunters are in close contact with both hinds and stags. There is no doubt that the rut is at its peak right now. Patrick and Christian are patiently waiting for the right stag. Here at Vale of Bork, you do not take any chances. It must be the right stag and nothing else. This is not just a matter of hunting laws and internal rules. It is just as much a matter of professional pride for a game manager like Patrick Rath, who knows how easily one can take the wrong stack. is a small glade in the forest where a good chance of a shot could arise if they're lucky so Christian and Patrick are ready Listen to the heartbeat of Christians. The pulse is high, and his adrenaline is very quickly pumped around his body. know how it sometimes can be very difficult to see the impact of the bullet exactly and Patrick is worried that the stag might have been hit on the top of the spine as it went down instantly and as the animal was moving when shot Okay. 
It is not difficult to understand Christian Wilhelm's feelings at this moment. The stag is lying dead, and everything is in perfect order. Jetzt kommt der Flatter. Toll. Das war spannend, hä? Das war wohl jetzt richtig spannend. Ja. The King of the Forest got a very dignified end in the shape of a shoulder shot and was hereby transferred to the eternal rutting fields in less than a second. Kirchhoff vom Feinsten, oder? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, mal, 20 hin. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Es stand so ein bisschen schräg. Ja. Dann habe ich mir gedacht, dann packst du ihn das Blatt und nach vorne weg. Dann hat er die auch sauer quittiert. Christian Wilhelm has, during a quite demanding hunt and in a slightly dramatic way, taken one of the giants of the forest, a trophy stag no less than 13 years old. And Patrick is yet again ready to show his respect of the stag in their traditional way. So, my friend. Mein Matzai. Mein Matzai. Patrick, super Pirsch. Tolles Erlebnis. Vom Feinsten, wirklich vom Feinsten. Das war. Schönste Morgen in der Brunft, den ich jemals erlebt habe. Der war wirklich klasse. Ja. Also besser geht's gar nicht. Und vor allen Dingen auch klarer Himmel, ja, und mit dem Nebel erst und so. Das passte, das war super, das war ein Traum. Also besser hätte es gar nicht sein können. Ey. Richtig alter Knopf. Ja. Da haben wir auch richtig, äh, haben wir einen Haufen Abwurfstangen von, von dem. Ja. Und vor allen, Dingen, vor allen Dingen so das vorher, wo wir noch gesehen haben, wie er gezogen ist und dass man ihn in Ruhe angucken konnte. Ja, und dann weg und dass er dann wiedergekommen ist, war total klasse. Das war richtig spannend. Aber ich sag noch länger jetzt nicht dauern können. Also zehn Minuten, also ich habe so langsam einen Krampf gehabt. <lacht> super Schuss, super Schuss, der ging runter. Ich habe gedacht, ja. hoffentlich hat er den mal nicht gekrillt. Aber der, nee, nee. der ja, aber wie gesagt, ich habe den Schuss so bestritten, ich habe ja gesagt, so wie ich ihn geschossen habe. Ja. Eben nach vorne ja. schräg dann rein, weil der drehte sich in dem Moment so ein bisschen weg. Ja. Dann habe ich gesagt, jetzt ist Ziehung, bevor er nach runter geht. Ja. Weil der so zielstrebig zu dem anderen hin wollte, der da unten gemeldet hat. Ne? Wie viele Meter waren das? 40. 40, jo. Mein Nahkampf. Höchstens. Ich hatte auch die kleine Vergrößerung. Das ist dann unheimlich praktisch mit dem, mit dem, mit dem Pirschglas. Du kannst dann schön runterdrehen. Ja? Und dann habe ich natürlich das ganze Feld gehabt. Ne? Das war klasse. Naja, sonst, wenn du nur einen Schatten von der Seite reinkommen also, siehst. Wenn du den Wildkörper hast oder so, ja. dann war schon gut. When the stag finally appeared in the glade, Patrick Rath was in no doubt for a second. This was the stag they'd been looking for. And thanks to Christian's experience as both a hunter and a marksman, the shot came almost instantly. The bullet was well placed high in the shoulder, a textbook example of red stag hunting at its best. Besten Dank, du laut. Das war richtig spannend. Auch für den verschissenen Morgen, da tut mir leid. Mitgenommen. <lacht> ähm, nein, den hatte ich auf der Agenda, diesen hier. Aha. Lach im Knall. Lach im Knall. <lacht> haben wir da 300 Wingmark. Nee, 270. 270. Lach im Knall. Der ist auch interessant da mit den drei Enden da unten. Ja, ja. hat er letztes Jahr schon einmal gehabt. Das habe ich gar, gar, gar nicht die ganze Zeit gar nicht gesehen. Ich habe immer nur diese Leiste gesehen hier. Das sind alles Kunstwerke. As Christian puts it, every stag is one of nature's artworks. 
It can hardly be put more elegantly. And the same goes for the way the hunt is ended. Christian Wilhelm's friends have come to congratulate him. It is a special day in even the longest life of a hunter when the king of the forest is put on parade and something which makes a significant impression. It is a great day, truly great. We would like to thank, first of all, Prince Richard and Prince Gustav and their family for letting us visit Berleborg again. And a similar heartfelt thank you to Patrick Rath, his staff, and all the foresters. Nowadays, many people do not understand the value and joy of belonging to a community. This, however, is not true for Berleborg, where everyone takes part in the experiences. It is also a place where most hunters would do their utmost in order to experience a hunt, if only just once in a lifetime. A good many have had the luck to get this opportunity, and none have left again disappointed. Everyone has been spellbound by the respect, warmth, and honesty and love for the game and the hunting which they have experienced at Bellabor. It has been fantastic to accompany you in the forest, Patrick Rath. It is always a pleasure to see and experience Bellabor, and we have all witnessed extraordinary sceneries and unique hunts for your majestic stags. the sound of the impressive roars of the forest many majestic stags, we now leave Berleborg and the estate's outstanding population of red deer. Happy hunting! <laughs>